Welcome to the Endurance for Everyone podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Endurance for Everyone podcast. Just Rob here. Uh, it's going to be a little different today. Typically, you know, you uh, if you're an avid listener or you know, frequent, I should say, you know that Monday we release our longer shows and we've been doing the sprint episodes, which are the shorter ones through the week. Um, John and I, due to scheduling conflict, couldn't get together in order to record a longer episode for today. So I'm going to try to go a little longer with today's sprint. And it still will be a shorter episode, but we are going to sit down and go ahead and record and try to get the, quote, full length, the longer show out on Wednesday of this week. So uh, something uh, I want to do a little different is I'm going to go ahead and try to give you guys a recap in case you're just tuning in for the first time to know what we were talking about last week, what we have upcoming as well. Uh, I guess I should say this should be episode 140 of the uh, Endurance for Everyone podcast. Last week, if you had listened in, um, I was, uh, well, go back two weeks actually, I, uh, I had done a few sprint episodes shorter ones, 10, you know, 12 minutes regarding uh, trails and trail advocacy, uh, basically just saying, hey, get out, find a trail, go run, support them and so forth. Uh, John followed that up when, because I was out on vacation with a episode where he sat down with Karen Clark, uh, avid you know, group member and ultra runner, and they talked about training and running, um, and that kind of tied in with the trail stuff that I was thinking about at the time, because the majority of the ultras Karen does and talks about are on trails, and it's different, you know, how you train for them and what you feel like during and after and all that. Uh, this show, I'm just going to go over, I'm going to hit a few punch list items, uh, because I, whenever John and I record, we sit down and we have some general topics in mind, but it isn't like we script the entire show out, you know, word for word and follow it, uh, so to say. So as we get into talking about things, sometimes I miss some things, uh, or I, I don't think I'm as clear. So as I'm listening back to the shows, I kind of take some notes and uh, that's what I'm going to do is go through a little bit from, a Monday, June 5th, episode 135, uh, Identity Crisis, go through a couple of the things that, that I was thinking in a little more in-depth with that. Um, you know, that's that's kind of the majority of what I'm going to go over. Maybe a little bit of um, what I'm going to call inadvertently meeting goals. That'll make sense in a few minutes. Uh, upcoming, you know, that, like I said, Wednesday of this week, we're going to do a longer show. Topic should be on uh, stretching as well as uh, upcoming racing. If you've been following along or in the group, you know that I have the damn try coming up this weekend. So um, we might talk a little bit about that because I just came back from vacation, jump into a, a one week worth of training, go into a race, and then that would lead us into next week's full show. Should be back on Monday. Um, and that would be a recap of the damn try. Not sure if any other sprints will be hitting this week or this weekend, so I won't include those topics because I uh, I don't know what ones we have or what ones we might be putting out there or any of that. So uh, without further ado, I'll get back into, to, I guess not back into, just into today's topic. As I said, um, episode 135, uh, posted on June Monday, June 5th, we called it the Identity Crisis, and that was me... Uh, I'm not going to say whining, talking, discussing, going through, and um, basically saying how it's just so hard. Um, you know, I, I know upcoming, you know, I have a lot of run training that I should be doing to perform well in the Chicago Marathon that's coming up in October of this year. So, but it's hard for me to identify as a runner. And, you know, we went in and said, hey, I identify as a triathlete, and I love riding my bike, and I want to get out. And run, and I want to, or I should say, I want to get out and swim. I want to get out and bike, not just run, run, run. And um, what I was thinking, and, and I guess I, I put myself a note, and then I, I put it in my phone, and I just literally wrote it out here. And um, my thoughts behind that are, you know, um, we need to enjoy the training. You know, you've heard us say that, and you've heard others say that, you know, before and and so forth. And they say that because, um, you know, if you put so much pressure on the race, you know, I'm training so hard for my fill-in-the-blank, 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, 
Iron Man, half Iron Man, whatever it is. You know, you don't know what's going to happen that day that, you know, of the race and any one factor, you know, whether it be heat or humidity or a mechanical on the bike or you might twist your ankle. And, uh, you know, if you're only really doing everything and putting so much pressure on that one day, on that one race, factor could really destroy you and and your your morality. You know, you go back to the Pittsburgh episode where I said, hey, I, I, I had four goals and I missed them all and it was hard to come to terms with that. Um, but really, and, and that being said is, I guess my thought and, and digging a little deeper into thoughts and feelings here on it, and, and this is not a, you know, data science driven, but I, I think people, I think we all inherently feel it. And that is, um, you know, it's hard for me to identify as a runner because, you know, I want to uh, do something and I don't want to say necessarily, I know it's not making a difference. I'm not out, you know, curing diseases and saving lives, but it's just so hard to, you know, train, to, and then you heard me say it, I don't want to train so hard to, to suck, you know, I, you know, I know, or I think I can win or play second, and it's kind of like instant bragging rights, you know, in my age group of a triathlon, so whenever somebody, you know, just being nice or a friend or family says, well, hey, how'd you do, you know, uh, it's, oh, you know, I took second in my age group, oh, that's great, it's just not the same as saying, like, oh, I took 187th out of 332. You know, it just doesn't uh, feel the same, at the, you know, to, to say that. And I guess in today's, I'm going to say, instant gratification, you know, digital society, you know, we all put out there and we, we want people in the group sharing your accomplishments and, and, and rooting each other on and so forth. But it's just, it does feel a little different uh, when you're out there training and running to, you know, you want it then, but it's almost like the flash in the pan. It's like, hey, you get your accolades, you put it up on, you know, Facebook or, you know, you, you get text messages from, you know, friends and family and, and then it's, it seems like it comes and goes. You know, I don't think, you know, my, you know, my funeral is going to be televised. I'm not going to be, you know, this great sports icon that's going to go down in history and kids are going to cry and have my poster on the wall or anything like that. But it's just really hard to, you know, really for me to sit back and just look at the next three months, four months of my life where I'm going to be working hard training six days a week, um, you know, and, and just to come in, not even average, you know, um, I don't know. That's why I just want to get back to it's, you know, you really need to, uh, enjoy the training. You need to uh, really like what you're doing. Um, one part of it I had said is, you know, maybe I hadn't said it in a while, but you know, when you're out there doing the same thing over and over again, you know, year after year, I train for the same races. I train on the same training courses. I, you know, it, things start to get stale. Uh, and I think you all are with me. You know what I mean by that. You know, it's when, when you start feeling that staleness, uh, you kind of got to maybe identify what that is. And, you know, that being said is um, it, it, the reason something would, uh, to me, I, after thinking about it, it feels stale is you're sitting back and all you're doing is performing or training in your comfort zone. You know, you're not pushing your boundaries. You know, you're not going until you feel the battery acid in the back of your throat or, you know, climbing up a hill so steep that you think the bike might fall over or pushing yourself, you know, on a run, you know, that uh, whatever it is or a swim, you know, and it's, you know, I, I heard the quote and that is, you know, um, you know, all the magic happens outside your comfort zone. You know, people, when you stretch the, you know, uh, your boundaries, when you stretch human boundaries, you know, that right now was, I think it's Nike's trying to have the, the sub two project where they're trying to get the first human to run a sub two hour marathon, you know, and, and the same deal back whenever it was trying to break the, the five minute and then into the four minute mile. And, and, you know, it, it can't be done until someone does it. And then a whole bunch of people seem to flood in. And then we've all been that way because we weren't all born doing you know, marathons or triathlons or ultras or, or these extremely long hikes and swims, you know, these are things that you get out there to day to time and you build it up, build it up, build it up. Um, you know, but then you, once you get to a certain level, whether that's a, once again, a 5k or a 
half marathon, you start you know, performing in that zone, in that, and that's where your level of comfort is, and that's where you're, what feels safe and secure. And it's really hard to break out of that to go to the next one. Um, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, and, and that's why when I was just you know saying I'm, I'm kind of really maybe thinking of. Um, I don't want to say laddering, but, you know, combining, I'm already going to be doing the, the marathon training for Chicago, which is in uh, October. So why not look for an ultra, you know, and that's where, uh, that's where my mind was going is for me, that's still partially in that comfort zone because it's running, but it's going to be outside of my comfort zone because it's going to be longer. It's going to be much hillier. You know, I don't, this one doesn't, uh, the one I'm looking at isn't quite looking at uh, orienteering, like, you know, the Barclays or anything like that. It's not as long as the Infinitus, you know, up there where it's, you know, multi-day. So it still keeps it in that one day, but pushes the boundaries much farther and much harder, um, you know, than I was originally looking at. And, you know, that's just something that I, uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, it's, it's scary. It's something that you're not used to, not accustomed to, you know, but you know, there's a, there's a big risk for failure there. And, uh, you know, nobody wants to fail, but I, if, to me, it's, if I'm not going to be, you know, uh, sitting in my comfort zone all summer doing just the regular swims and bikes that I've been doing for the last seven years now at this point, I really want to, you know, not necessarily say swing for the fences, you know, uh, but you know, I'm not going straight to a hundred miler, but for, you know, for me, this is the next logical step to push me just a little bit outside of my comfort zone and try something new. Um, that's, I guess that's all I have to say really on that part of that topic. Um, so I want to switch gears here now and talk and say a little bit about, uh, and it, it kind of goes with that comfort zone thing too, is, you know, I, I said inadvertently, uh, meeting goals and it sounds weird, you know, and you've all heard people that have said that, Oh, I, I went out and PR to race. I wasn't even trying, you know, uh, this isn't one of those humble brags. This is more, you know, along the lines of, you know, one, I guess one, I want to call it a, a air quote, a scale victory and one's a non-scale victory. Um, you know, so the first one is, you know, uh, in my mind or, you know, when I started losing some weight, I had sat back and said, you know, I really want to be around X and you know, somewhere I said in the one nineties, maybe the high one eighties. And, you know, last week, week and a half ago, I saw that number on the scale and it's just proof positive that I guess your body changes through time and adapts with whatever you're doing or not doing. Uh, you know, the reason I had that number in mind is I was always like about 195 when I was in high school. And then when I got pretty heavy and then I lost a lot of weight, I got down to about 189 and I was, you know, pretty thin and lean. But what I was doing at that time, and, and I'm not going to say right or wrong and give all the details, I've talked about it before, but, you know, it was essentially a starvation diet and two workouts a day. So forgetting the, 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 the calorie in, calorie out starvation that I was doing, just go to the working out twice a day, you know, it was running, it was swimming as I was first getting into it. And there's a little bit of lifting in there. So I had some tone and definition and I looked and felt a certain way. Uh, well, the other week, as I said, I got that, I saw 195 on the scale. Um, it's, you know, I'd been hovering right over 200, which, so it's only a five, seven pound swing that I saw, but it, it's funny to say it got me to that target number. Um, and it was really unsatisfying. Granted that happened because I was coming off of the stomach flu. That was just terrible. And I don't recommend that to anyone. Um, but you know, that being said is once I got, got that cleared out of my system, once again, still for a day or two, you know, I see 195 on the scale, but you know, I still have or feel like a little bit of a in the center mass, you know, not saying a gut, but in a little bit of love handles, just a little bit of squishy, squeezy, jiggly that I just really don't care for. Um, and that's where, you know, but that being said is I've been doing a lot of running and, you know, cycling and so forth. I haven't been doing any core work. I haven't been doing any lifting. I haven't been doing anything like that to put on, um, you know, mass and tone. I've just been, you know, trying to atrophy, so to say, which isn't the greatest way to accomplish that goal either. So, you know, that's the first when I say inadvertently achieving a goal. I saw the number, but it wasn't as satisfying. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute too once I go with the other one. And that's, you know, hey, a non-scale non goal is... 
Um, the other day, yesterday, I was out for a run, and it was a very hot, for me in my area, you know, John probably sees these temperatures every day, but it was about 86, 87 degrees, um, and, you know, it, c clear blue sky, no clouds, no breeze. I'm pushing the little guy in the stroller. Uh, it's supposed to be an easy, uh, easy paced, you know, uh, John had said 10, really, the calendar called for 8, but anyways, I ended up doing 9.5. I cut the run a little bit short. Um, due to some chafing that was going on. So I only did uh, nine and a half miles, and there was some walking at the end because it was pretty painful because of the chafing. Um, that's a whole topic for another day. But um, one of my goals, and it, comes, it kind of always circles back to the body image, and that is I, I always said I want to be able to run with my shirt off. That seems stupid to anyone, right? Because hey, the gist is, well, that's a simple goal. Take your shirt off, run, boom, accomplished it. But really, it's I, I have an idea in my mind what I want to look like. I want to be toned. I want to, you know, be toned, be tan, be fit. I want to run with my shirt off and have people like not shoot a glance at me like, oh, come on, man, put a shirt on. And um, you know, that's 99% in my head. So when I say, hey, I accomplished that goal, it was hot. I was two and a half, three miles in, and my shirt was already drenched. So I, you know, I literally, because I was pushing the little guy in the stroller, I stopped, took my shirt off, threw it on the stroller, took my socks off as well. Um, you know, I do have a good set of uh, Brooks shoes as well as a good set of Newtons. I, I rotate through about five different, four different sets of shoes at a time, so I'm always running in something just a little different, so it's not always the same. Um, and the shoes always said, hey, you can run basically without socks because the shoe liner is actually called the sock, and it's pretty soft. I didn't have any issues with that, you know, thank goodness, but I was just so hot. You know, it was just not something I was accustomed to because, hey, you know, two weeks ago it was still in the 50s here, so it's a large um, swing in temperature. Anyways, back to it. Took the shirt off. I can check it off the list. I can say, hey, I'm out doing it. I still just don't feel comfortable doing it. You know, I I, um, I don't know what people thought. I don't know how it looked. It isn't like anyone has a video of me. But just looking down at myself while running, there was still more jiggle, as I said, in the center mass. And once again, that's tied to, you know, in my head seven, eight months ago, I thought, I hit this number, I'm going to be here. And it doesn't exactly correlate like that. You know, the other part of that I said is, hey, we all have our own body issues that we all have to get over at you know some point in time and or just you know come to terms with it or or meet it. I don't know if we ever really truly can meet it. I don't think I'm I don't know if I'm ever going to sit back and be like, "Nope, that's it. Perfect." You know, can't 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 make it any better. But um you know going with that train of thought and saying that is um there are some guidelines. You know, I I think I could probably be 5 pounds, 10 pounds heavier. Um, but you know, if I put on some muscle mass, if I'm toning up, which would help tighten things up, you know, I could also maybe be 20 pounds lighter. Uh, um, but you know, I don't, it, you know, when you see the photos or if you go out and Google like, you know, five pounds of fat or whatever, and they show the big old, you know, blob of it sitting there and so forth, I'm not carrying quite that much. You know, I don't think I actually have five pounds of fat around uh, you know, out on my exterior, I don't know if that's sub, you know, I don't know which fat that one's called, but you know, the the belly fat and the the love handles, you know, I don't even think I have the quite the five pounds there. Um, but that's where when you read any of the studies and science and so forth, they all say the same thing, and that is you can spot gain muscle, meaning if you just sit down and do 400 curls a day, you're gonna build your biceps up, um, but you can't spot lose fat. You know, you can't do a hundred crunches and expect your, you know, the, the beer gut to go away. That would help do some toning and so forth. That's where I go back to, I need to do the core work and some, some strength exercises. Um, but you know, I can't do 400 crunches and expect it to go away. And it, it's not linear. I can't expect to lose five pounds and target and say, that's the five right there. Take it from my belly. You know, um, it, so it's going to still be a, you know, many more months, if not, you know, who knows, years to finally get to where I need to be. But also, um, I don't know, I don't want to screw up the quote, but it's that, you know, the person, you know, the person who you are can't introduce you or can't get you to the person you need to be or you're going to be, you know, basically the idea being that kind of what got you here won't get you there. You know, you're going to, you know, certain things got me to this point, 
but I'm going to have to refine it, work harder, do better at it in order to get to where I want to be. And, you know, I don't know if that goes hand in hand with the, once again, stepping out of my comfort zone and running farther, harder and so forth. It might be a, you know, now I, it's now's the time where I really got to be strict and do 60, 90, uh, 180 days of, uh, you know, strict clean. Maybe it's not, you know, hey, maybe the, what, where my current body shape is, is a result of the, um, you know, once every six months having a few drinks or once every week or every other week having dessert, you know, really refining, you know, and that's where it comes back to that, you know, what I was saying earlier about, um, you know, you know, you want to kind of do something significant. Um, you know, for me, that's, that's where I'm at. You know, if I continue to do what I've been doing, I'm going to continue to be where I'm at. If I want to make significant changes, I have to make significant changes. I have to be willing to give up on the cake cookies and gummies and that I sneak in, you know, here and there in order to get what I truly want. Or maybe I need to sit back and realign my thoughts and goals, you know, my thoughts and redefine my goals to say, hey, you know what, um, I'm okay with, with with where I'm at. You know, if this is as good as it's going to be, this when I say metric, this waist circumference to this chest circumference to this weight and this speed, maybe that that's it. You know, I, once again, I'm not going to go out and try to do uh, sprints in a hundred degree and you know every single day, it, um, if that means not getting to spend that amount of time with my son as well. So it's just a matter of redefining. Uh, the goals to see exactly what they are and where I want to be with it. So, um, without having someone on the other end of this, it's kind of hard to know if I've hit everything and, and, you know, covered it in a logical progression. So if I've opened some loops that I haven't closed, please feel free to go ahead and uh, kick us a message on Facebook or, you know, write to me, Rob at endurance for everyone.com. Um, that's it. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and close this show out. I'm going to just once again ask, please go ahead and give us some some ratings and reviews, you know, for the better or for the worse, for, hopefully for the better out there, you know, iTunes, um, po, you know, Podbean, wherever you're listening to it. Um, come join the group over on Facebook if you're not, you know, Endurance for Everyone. Uh, you know, so supportive group, and we we ask we we say it's that, and we ask that you be that. You know, if there's any negativity, uh, you know, you're gonna get booted out. We're there to be supportive and and share victories with each other. So, you know, come on over, check it out. Uh, hope you guys found some value in this. As I said, upcoming here uh, Wednesday should be a longer show with John and I. We're gonna cover the topic of uh, stretching and upcoming races. Following week, uh, damn try recap. We'll see how I did. Uh, with what little training I've got in. That's all for now. Talk to you later. Bye. If you have comments or questions for the show, send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And remember, swim calm, bike strong, and run steady.